Hey guys, it's Shonda back with Spec Traditions. We had a little snafu with the strawberry starts that I had ordered online. Um, I was gonna do seeds and then I was watching Callie Kim and she was suggesting something different. So I was like, oh, I'll do that. But it didn't work out. Um, they were supposed to be delivered this week and then they did not do that. So we had to switch it up. So I went and bought a bunch of plants from Walmart. Um, Lowe's has them, Home Depot has them, the Ozark and the, wait, wait, the Ozark and the Quinault one. Um, I bought those two. I was supposed to get two other varieties with my order. All Star and it was something else. All Star and another variety. I can't remember it, but that's okay. If we do them in the future, we will. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get our strawberry tower done with these. So we've gotten started with one of them here. I am working on the bottom two. The one you saw was, was gonna be for the top two. So the plan was to have two, it was four varieties all together. So I was gonna have two in this one, two in that one. So and there was 25 plants for each variety. So I had 100 holes that I was able to fill. Now I have less. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this one and put these two in here. If I can eventually get over here or, or I could just do strawberry um, seeds and start my own and, re and start that process over, I can do that as well. But for now, we're gonna do this. No big deal. So I am just pulling these apart. Most of the time there's two of them in there. And it's kind of hard to do with one hand. But I wanted to show you guys what I was doing. Just breaking these apart. And these have a lot of roots. So I think it's going to be very hard for me to hurt them. <laughs> There's the second plant. See, there we go. So what I am doing is one on each end and then two in the middle. The other variety that I started with, the Gnault ones, are very are, are much fuller than these, so I needed to space them out. I couldn't do one in every spot. So And they'll fill out even more as the season goes on, so I don't think it's necessary to do every single spot. We'll see how this goes, and I'm just going to keep going with one, skip one, do two, skip one, do one. And I'm going to do that on both sides here and see how many strawberries I have left, how many plants I have left. If I have a lot, then I can fill some more in where there's space. All right, I'm gonna keep moving. All right, so I wasn't able to completely finish the strawberry tower because I did run out of strawberries. So I'm going to hopefully finish that tomorrow. I'm gonna to pick up some more so that I can finish that one tower. And I'll show you the finished product then. Happy birthday, Quill 3.0. So I have this little guy was one of the Cornish Cross. Today, it was kind of laying in the bottom of the, well, they're all at the bottom, but it was just kind of laying there. Everybody else was moving around. And this one was getting stomped, stepped on, stomped on, rolled on. So I took it out and put it in this little box with some food. One of his eyes, <coughs> excuse me, one of his eyes, kind of closed, looks a little pussy, or puffy, and so I don't even think it was going to make it, but I wanted to separate it, so I put it in here, we'll see what happens, there's food in here, and I'm going to put a little, I'm going to try to put a little small water in the, in the corner for it as well, oh gosh, did I just see number nine come out of nowhere, <sighs> I think, but I'm going to try to put a little water in the corner but it's so much smaller than the rest of them. Like, I'll pan over so you can see the rest of the 24. 
Yeah, they are. You can see they're much bigger. Much bigger. They're one week old now. They're all very fluffy. The other one's kind of like wet and just not. And not wet because it was sitting in water. Like, you know, it's just not looking. Not looking too good. So like I said, I got food in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in a small container in there and see if it comes back to life, but I got a feeling it might not make it. So we'll see what happens. Three, 3.0 quail. Third round of hatching eggs. All right, so something crazy happened. So all the shells that had hatched, I took them out and cleaned out the brooder and put them, I'm sorry, cleaned out the incubator, put the babies in their brooder and put these ones that had not ha uh, had any pips in them, left them in there. So I was in the kitchen with all the hatched shells in there as well, in a bowl. And I heard a peeping noise and I was like, where is that coming from? I thought it was coming from the other side of the wall where the, all the chickens, all the babies are. But it wasn't that, it was very faint. And I, was, I looked at that bowl and I said, I hear something coming from this bowl. Well, when I was scooping up all of the hatched eggs, one of the non-hatched eggs got in the bowl by mistake. And there was, there was, I picked it up and listened to it and I was like, I heard, and I, I could hear tapping on it and I heard a little chirping. So I, and there was a, actually a, um, like a little, some pipping holes in it. I was in the kitchen and we weren't not near the incubator or anything. So I went on and opened up that egg and the baby was alive. So I put it in a bowl, rushed it in here to the, to the bathroom and stuck it back in the incubator so it can dry. Here it is. We'll see what happens. Um, his vent area or her vent area, it looks, it was a little reddish, but it could be the way they all look when they come out. It looked kind of like it was protruding a little bit. So I'm not sure if this was a situation where it wasn't fully developed or if it is, or if it was just the way it looks when they first come out and I didn't realize it, I don't know. It could be perfectly fine. But here it is, I'll check on it um, throughout the night and see what happens. And I'm so out of breath, I'm sorry. Whew, I didn't have time to get my phone. Sam's like, should I record it? And I'm like, there's no time. <laughs> so I just, here we are. But I wanted to get you guys this before so you can see it. So I will, like I said, check on everybody tonight. It's almost nine o'clock now. And, um, you know, once everybody's asleep, I'll come back down and see what's going on down here. 
see if it's dried off, see if it's still going strong. And then I will keep you guys posted. But we may have number 24. We shall see. Wow, it's been a day. So one more thing that I wanted to show you guys. I am finally starting to grow fodder for the chickens and rabbits. So I got some rye seeds today and I ordered some barley. So I wanna show you guys the first night of us doing the rye. I'm waiting for the barley to come via Amazon. So I got them here in my tray that I ordered a couple weeks ago. And so I'm supposed to soak them for, was it 24 hours? I don't know, I'll look it up again and see. But they're gonna soak overnight and into tomorrow. And after that, I think it's 24 hours, so tomorrow night I will start the rinsing where you rinse it every eight hours. So three times a day you'll rinse it. And you'll see this is a tray that lifts up where the holes are, so that'll be really simple to do. Love this tray. Um, I Since I'm going to be doing barley and rye, possibly another something else, either sunflower seeds or wheat grass. Um, I went on and ordered this whole little, another like kit where you get like four trays, three or four trays, and then you can do one of each, so. But I wanted to get started and try it out, so here we are. So, you will be following along with this with me as well. Another adventure. This supposedly really cuts down on feed costs and you know, gives your livestock something good, nutritious to eat. That's homegrown. It's a win-win. So warm and snuggly. So that's all for tonight. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to share this with a friend. Like our video. Give us a thumbs up comment let youtube know that you want to see more of us thank you so much you all have a good one till next time